collectibles in video games come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. From classic power-ups like mushrooms and fire flowers in Super Mario, to having the latest team of the seasons in FIFA Ultimate Team. These items have proven to be things that players just love to hoover up during a playthrough. However, sometimes developers decide to throw in some collectibles that some players might have wished they just left on the floor. There have been numerous examples over the years of games chucking items that hurt or hinder a player, require some serious sacrifices to pick up and use, or come with such a disturbing backstory that the appeal is firmly scraped off. With all that in mind, these haunting video game collectibles might be better off avoided in your next playthrough. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 most haunting video game collectibles. Number 10. Hobbs Remains – The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is a game home to several disturbing quest lines, most of which come with their own set of unique items and rewards. From cannibalism to Ripper-esque serial killers, there's plenty of darkness in the home of the Nords. However, arguably the most chilling item in the game comes from a side mission players will start when they discover Frostflow Lighthouse. Right from the off, players will work their way through a gruesome crime scene of a family being ambushed by Farmer and Chorus, the two most disgusting enemies in the game, who've burrowed underneath their home. As players make their way through the lighthouse, they'll uncover journal records from the family's patriarch, Hart. Players will learn that Hart battled his way down into the farmer tunnels, only to see all of his family dying before being eaten by a huge Chorus Reaper. Completing the dungeon and killing the Reaper will see players pick up a bloodied skull known as Hart's remains. It's one of the most chilling locations Bethesda have ever conjured up, and culminates with an item that is just as haunting as it is emotional to pick up. Number 9. Cerebral Boar – Turok 2 – Seeds of Evil Turok 2 – Seeds of Evil is home to a number of unique weapons, with the improved technical mechanics making it a clear upgrade as a first-person shooter compared to its predecessor. The Cerebral Boar is easily one of the most memorable guns from the game, and takes advantage of a number of these new developments at play. It's also one of the grossest items in the series' history. A circular grey device that appears to have been made out of metal with a few blue lights etched onto it. According to Seeds of Evil, the gun locks onto the brainwaves of enemies, before launching its projectiles that nestle in their head. What follows is one of the most disgusting sights the N64 has ever produced, with huge waves of blood and guts spilling from their craniums before fully decapitating them in a one-shot kill. The gun is one of the most strategic and powerful items in Seeds of Evil, but undoubtedly an experience every Turok player needs to try out at least once during their time in the game. Number 8. Blast Mask – The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is unique for being one of two titles released on one Nintendo home system, as well as its distinct art style and themes. Time travel is at the centerpiece of the game, which also helps throw up a number of interesting, albeit slightly creepy, creepy items during a playthrough. Perhaps the most outlandish of these items is the Blast Mask, acquired by heading over to North Clock Town at midnight and saving an old woman from being robbed. When used, the mask will replace the B button with the word EXPLODE and will allow players to replace bombs with it. Allowing for unlimited uses in a series known for its stingy ammunition, it certainly has some benefits for players. However, its design and mechanics make for an unsettling mix. When worn, Link will traverse the game with a large black circle with a white skull painted across it. A strange look for the main hero of the story. The mask will also deal damage to a player when used, making it one of the few items in the Zelda series that hurts as well as helps the player. Number 7. Agrippa's Head Amnesia The Dark Descent Amnesia The Dark Descent revitalized the survival horror genre when it was first released, with its Brennenburg Castle setting a chilling atmosphere and developers' frictional games letting their imaginations loose with the types of enemies that are shown to line its walls. In the game, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa is shown to be a German philosopher that had been imprisoned and horribly mutilated by the main antagonist Alexander. Despite this, he's a pretty likable character on the whole, chatting away to the player and asking that they take him with them over the remainder of their playthrough. Agrippa's emaciated appearance and lack of a jaw make him a creepy figure to look at, but should the players decide to make way as tonic, they will have to saw off his head from his shoulders and have it placed in their inventory. 
From there, players will have the option of either keeping the head on them, after all, who doesn't want a historical figure's severed head in their back pocket, or toss it into the portal where a gripper will be shown as having been saved by Daniel. Number 6. Lulu's Doll Final Fantasy X Final Fantasy X was one of the most ambitious and successful titles to have been made following its release back in 2001, with one of the biggest factors behind this acclaim being the acute attention to detail Hironobu Sakaguchi emphasized for the game's world, characters, and overall feel compared to its predecessors. One of the best exhibits of this new direction comes in the form of Lulu, one of the party members players can recruit in the game. Lulu is a black mage who uses black magic in battle wielding plush toys as dolls in a sort of homage to classic voodoo practices players would be familiar with. It's revealed in Final Fantasy X II that Lulu's dolls are actually fully sentient beings with a childlike mentality, suddenly casting a very different shade on this potential ally. What's more, it's shown that these dolls look up to Lulu as their mother, something that she doesn't seem altogether aware of, which just further makes this whole collection of items to be quite a bit more unsettling than what even the developers might have planned. Number 5. Jack Fallout 3 Everything from this weapon's name, design, and the location it's found in deserves recognition here. In Fallout 3, players may stumble across a location known as Deathclaw Sanctuary in the Capital Wasteland. A dark, twisty maze that's full of piles of mutilated bodies and pools of blood, it's home to anywhere between 6 and 12 Deathclaws, one of the Fallout world's most frightening enemies. Suffice it to say, this is one of the most disturbing locations in the game. It's also home to a unique melee weapon named Jack. Jack can be acquired by players after completing the Waters of Life quest, and will be found on a dead soldier buried underneath a pile of other bodies that can sometimes even include a giant ant. Not only is the weapon a ripper chainsaw item, but its design makes a point of showing the blood-tipped blades that players will set whirling once it's used. One final note on the weapon, its name is obviously an homage to Jack the Ripper, the notorious Victorian serial killer who murdered and mutilated at least five different women. Number 4. Rosemary's Flask Resident Evil Village Resident Evil Village is a game filled with countless moments of disgusting gore and disturbing items. However, perhaps the best and worst of these is the flask players come across early in their playthrough. Village revolves around a plotline that sees Ethan Winters, the protagonist from the previous title in the series, trek to an eerie hamlet in Eastern Europe. He initially sets out to locate his daughter Rosemary, eventually running into the game's antagonists, Mother Miranda, and her four lieutenants that rule over the village. The first of these lieutenants players must defeat is Lady Dimitrescu, the Countess of the castle that towers over the village. Once players defeat the Countess, they'll pick up a dirty flask that will be revealed to contain the head of Rosemary. The Duke then explains that players must kill all the lieutenants in the village, collecting different body parts of Ethan's daughter, and bring them to the shrine located at the center of the map. Running around collecting body parts is a disturbing mission brief in and of itself, but the image of Ethan running around village with different body parts of Rosemary in his back pocket takes things to a different level. Number 3. The Videotape Silent Hill 2 To be fair, there are a whole array of items scattered across Silent Hill 2 that could have found themselves on this list. There is an absolute abundance of creepy locations in Silent Hill 2, however one that always sticks out is the Lakeview Hotel, home to James and Mary's special place in Room 312. Once players are able to make it up to Room 312 on the third floor by solving the Disney Princess Music Box puzzle, they'll be prompted to find the videotape and watch it on a television in the room. James is told by Mary that he had made the videotape after recording their trip to Silent Hill while staying in the hotel, and the film begins nicely enough, with the latter being shown confessing her love for the town. Things immediately take a turn for the creepy and disturbing, however, when the film becomes distorted and James is shown smothering his wife with a pillow. It's a moment that really stands out as the pivotal moment in everything Silent Hill 2 has been gearing up for, but isn't half chilling to watch with each playthrough. Number 2. Severed Head 
Manhunt. Rockstar purposefully developed Manhunt in 2003 to be one of the most gritty titles the gaming industry had ever seen, and its level of graphic violence and incredibly dark themes ended up winning it both acclaim and infamy. With so much violence being pushed on a technically competent piece of hardware like the PS2, it should come as no surprise that Rockstar were able to let their imaginations run wild with all the ways that players could deliver some sickening kills. In Manhunt, weapons are split into four Four different categories – yellow, green, blue, and red. The yellow weapons are melee instruments in the game that players can use as projectiles. However, there's one that sticks out amongst the pack more than any other. If players use a meat cleaver or machete, achieve a gruesome execution with some barbed wire, or a hasty execution with a chainsaw, they'll be able to sever the head off the body of an enemy. The head will bear the same resemblance of the enemy the player just killed, and can be used to distract or deal some small amount of damage to other enemies in the game. Gross. Number 1. Umbilical Cord – Bloodborne with a plotline revolving around a terrible plague against Lovecraftian and Gothic Victorian designs, 2015's Bloodborne pulls no punches when it comes to delivering the disturbing. Bloodborne holds three different endings, though one of these is far rarer than the others. In order to unlock the game's third and true ending, players must collect three, wait for it, umbilical cords. There are four cords in total across the game to collect, though players are only required to find three before being able to destroy German. And simply collecting them isn't even the end game when it comes to these disgusting collectibles. Players are required to consume them all. What's more, the means by which players acquire these umbilical cords are some of the most disturbing things they're ever likely to witness in a video game. Players will need to pick between killing Murgo's wet nurse, exploring the abandoned workshop in the healing church workshop, killing a patient at Yosefka's clinic, or killing Ariana's baby at Cathedral Ward after leading her to safety there. Even for a game like Bloodborne, this is reading a solid 10 on the disturbing leaderboard. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other extraordinarily haunting video game collectibles. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness. Thanks.